Good evening and welcome to tonight's Finance Subcommittee for the Brockton School Committee, Tuesday, April 6, 2021. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law GL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the Open Meeting Law's requirements that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public so long as adequate or so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 98. The public can access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. <clears throat> Before we dive into our agenda, We'll do our roll call to establish a quorum. Mayor Sullivan. Here. Vice Chair D'Agostino is here. Ms. Asak. Here. Mrs. Mendez. Mr. Minicello. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Mr. Sullivan. Here. All right. Quorum has been established. So our finance committee agenda for the evening, we have two items, the FY 2022 school department budget, and finally any other business to come before finance. And I believe our superintendent has a presentation for us. Yes, thank you. Mr. Thank you. Casino. So we'll pull up the, um, uh, the certified staff um, for the committee's consideration. Uh, you also have it in front of you as a spreadsheet that Aldo was able to put together with the numbers. Um, you hear me all right? Um, the, the spreadsheet, Aldo spreadsheet. Thank you. Yep, that's it. Thank you. So just, and I'll go over details as we just want to get through uh, the overview. So uh, in our special education department, we're um, looking for 13 positions. Um, as you can see, the schools, and again, I'll go over this in more detail, MSN at Arnone, Baker. Uh, this is a moderate special needs uh, teacher. Uh, Arnone, Baker, North Middle School, South Middle School, um, East. Huntington. We also need a vocational teacher at the Huntington School, two of them, uh, to expand the options for our Huntington students to take vocational programs. It also uh, increases the Chapter 74 funding. Uh, a vocational teacher at the Key Center um, for the Graphic Arts program there. And then um, a special education teacher um, at the uh, Key Center as well. So a total of 13 positions uh, for special education. And then in our bilingual department, we need ESL teachers. Uh, we need to um, add teachers at the George to continue uh, with the UNIDOS program, the growth of the UNIDOS program. And we need to eliminate some split classes uh, throughout the district that uh, are sharing two grades. So that's a total of 19 positions. And then at the Key Center, we need one social studies teacher. At the elementary, um, and this has to do with um, uh, Student Opportunity Act plan is to uh, grow the number of pre-K classes, and that's a goal of our Student Opportunity Act plan. Uh, so we need to add four pre-K classrooms. Those in, uh, so those would be at uh, schools throughout the district. So four pre-K kindergarten teachers. At East, we need two math teachers. As you know, we are a adding um, another grade to North, so a new incoming sixth grade will go into North. The current sixth grade will obviously move to seventh grade. So we need to add a cluster of teachers there, um, two of those foreign language teachers, uh, one art teacher, an English teacher, one math teacher, 
two science teachers and one social studies teacher for a total of eight. South Middle School, we need two math teachers and one ELA teacher for a total of three. Um, West Middle School needs a math teacher, a science teacher, and one social studies teacher. The PLUF, we need to add, and again, I'll go over all the um, details about these positions and why they're needed in the PowerPoint. Um, PLUF needs a science teacher, a math teacher, and a reading teacher for a total of three. And then Brockton High School needs seven teachers, Spanish teacher, social studies, biology, a construction teacher, which is in vocational, culinary arts, and we need another nursing teacher because our waiting list is so large for our nursing program, we want to add another nursing teacher to kind of cut down on that waiting, waiting list for a very popular nursing program. And down below, I put an additional 12 positions that we would have to um, wait and see throughout the spring and early summer. Um, as you know, at this point right now, enrollment is down about 990 students. So those 12 positions would be based on enrollment slash needs across the district and see with those if those we were trying to obviously we're going to do a marketing plan to start bringing students back uh, a lot of our students that we lost are at the elementary level so um, we want to wait and see we, we really want to try to grab a lot of those students back a lot of students that did not st uh, start kindergarten uh, parents chose to keep them home so we want to you know we have to be ready for um, a bigger kindergarten class and, and possibly a much bigger first grade class. So we, we want to keep um, 12 positions available as we move into probably uh, May and June and probably into July, seeing where our numbers are going. So that's an overview. So with the 12 positions, um, basically we're going to keep in the bullpen. That's a, an additional 75 teaching staff. As you can see, that's a total of about four and a half million dollars. So, Aldo, do you want to go over the figures before we move to the PowerPoint? Sure. So these figures, when we hire new staff, as you know, they come in anywhere from a first-year bachelor's all the way, you know, to someone who's had a doctorate and, you know, could have had prior experience at other schools. So we put together an average of about 60000 a person, and that allows also for um, um, some health insurance benefits and whatnot. Some take it, some don't. Our starting salary is around 46000 for a first-year teacher with a bachelor's, and then you know, progressively it goes up from there. So those figures, as I've always said, those are estimates, you know, based on, on uh, past history of hiring. So some could be higher, some could be lower. And in filling these positions at the same time, we're reviewing, you know, who's retiring and what moves, what shifting they'll be. And I've left, there's three columns up there, and I left the other two open because we've got many grant opportunities coming our way. So I'm hoping to see an increase in Title I. And I'm also hoping to see an increase in, in new grants that are, you know, help us with, um, with our different needs. So hopefully all that burden won't be on our general fund monies. Hopefully by the time you know, we get into the summer, we'll have other grants to shift those costs over to so we can basically lower the burden on the general fund and have more grants pick up more staff. As you remember, years ago we had kindergarten para grants. You know, we've had, uh, like we have the Promise School now, which is... Um, putting money in so hopefully there'll be additional title one two three um, you know uh, um, they've been increasing so hopefully um, with this budget they will and we'll progress from there That's it. any questions for Aldo before we move into the more detailed explanation for each position and the need and the um, you know, the, basically the, uh, the evidence behind it that we're, we asked all department heads and all principals to come forward with um, when we went through these positions. We spent a lot of time working with our principals on uh, schools that had sustainability reports and what they need, um, sustainability plans to see what they needed. Uh, positions had to be tied to those, and they also had to be tied to um, school improvement plans for those schools that do not have uh, sustainability plans. So, um, and also, we, uh, I worked closely with, uh, the executive team worked closely with um, Larry Mason from Special Education and uh, Kelly Jones through the bilingual department. So um, we can go over the details of the positions and, you know, the need for each, for each one. So any questions before we move on? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I do have a quick question. So um, I know at one point we had cut music teachers. Um, 
do you believe we'll, we'll have a position to be able to bring bring back so we can get the younger students into music? Um, um, right now, we're fully staffed in music. Okay, good. Um, we did have the teachers that, um, that we, um, I think there were four that we laid off, um, and all those teachers were called back okay. as we, money came in through the house budget last year, and we were in better shape, so we, you allowed us to call those uh, music teachers back, so we're not going to lose music lessons at the fourth grade anymore. Um, and then some of those 12 positions as well could be if there's any holes in that area uh, or specialists that are needed. Uh, again, we, we really want to come back strong with our music program. Thank you. Um, Aldo, you mentioned that the 60,000 is an average. Obviously, the low end is 46. What was the high number you used in developing that average? I usually go as high as 75. Okay. Um, and that's... The, that's like the, the, the bulk average of our employees. So the fact that we've had so many layoffs the past few years, we have right. very few at the low end. So I think a lot of the hiring now will probably be first year teachers coming in. Okay. And um, Mike. I'm going to go sit over here. I guess I'm brave. <laughs> All right. Mike, on, on the, um, I know you're going to get settled, but I can ask the question. On the, on the 12 additional positions, and this might be premature, are those addressed in more detail in the PowerPoint? I don't want to No, those are positions that I think we need to keep in the bullpen to see where our enrollment goes. Right. So right now we're down 990 students, with the majority of them being at the elementary level. Right. I'm hoping with a strong, you know, we're getting through COVID with a strong marketing plan, uh, that we bring back a lot of the kindergarten students that did not, parents felt, to keep them home this year um, and homeschool them themselves. Um, there are a lot of kindergarten students that were moving into first grade that parents kept home um, and homeschooled them, so they came off our rolls as far as enrollment. So those 12 teachers, um, I wanted to keep aside that we could make decisions on when we get closer, I mean, we, our kindergarten enrollment is really starting to, with the new online enrollment system, is really starting to pick up. Uh, and I see, if I had a crystal ball, I think our elementary numbers will, will, won't stay as low as they are now. Uh, again, that's the largest group that we lost. I think we're going to see an increase in that, and I just think we need to have positions put aside that not to de decide on tonight that we need to be ready for. And they, we might be adding these in July, maybe August, um, but I think we really need to watch our enrollment closely. Right. So I guess my, my question is you would... Never mind. I answered my own question. It's always nice when I can do that, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, because I probably else? don't answer them very well anyway. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you're fine. Kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyone else have anything <laughs> for the superintendent? Mr. Sullivan. Just one quick one, Mike. Uh, due to COVID-19, did you have a lot of retirements from teachers? No, not really. Um, our retirement list is about, I want to say, about 20. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it's, it, it might go up, um, but this budget allows for any. So this doesn't include anybody retiring. You, that's already budgeted. So anybody that's retiring, any people that are retiring, te current teachers, any um, other staff that are retiring, those positions are all uh, being funded. Uh, they're, they're not being cut, so um, so these are additional positions that don't exist this year. Um, in the, any retirements, we would be filling. Right. Yep. Thank so you. thanks. It's about 20 on the list. 20. Great. But again, you never know. We could end up with obviously more as we get through. I mean, people obviously have until the end of the school year and before September if they decide to retire. Um, but the people that we know about that have filed for retirement, it's about 20. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Mrs. Sullivan. Um, did they offer the early retirement this year? Or? I thought there was something about an early retirement. They were talking about it at the state level. Okay. Um, there are, I think, two or three bills that are pending uh, that have been put forward and supported by uh, members of the House and Senate, but nothing has been acted okay. on yet. Right, there's a three-year bill, a five-year bill, and then there's another bill that allows people to buy back some time. Um, but none of those are all still pending. Nothing has passed. Didn't we approve some retirement incentives, too, at one point in the past? When we were struggling with our budget. 
I thought we, um, I thought that was like last fall or something, or maybe. Yeah, I think we, we yeah we offered it um, last year when we knew we were going to struggle with our budget. Right. We did offer a retirement incentive, and it always was something to try to you know uh, entice people that are obviously on the top of the pay scale to to retire early. Mm -hmm. um, now that we're really not in a budget crunch, we didn't see the need to to offer it. Um, but the state again has three bills that are pending, and whether or not they get voted on. Right. We'll and they, may, they may put some money into it to ultimately, yeah. which would benefit us in every other district. So. Exactly. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Sullivan, again. One quick, if I could. Sure. Mike, it's on the 990 students that are missing. Is there anything being done to try to find Yep. There's um, Jess Hodges, Masia Andrade Serpa, um, and um, Saraya Presume. Uh, and there's teams of other people that are working, and that was part of the marketing plan um, that we put together. Uh, they're calling schools, are, um, the Parent Information Center, um, parent advocates are calling these homes to see, uh, you know, if the children will be returning to the school system. Uh, we will do a marketing campaign where we're reaching out to families uh, and, and try to bring them back. So, yeah, we're going to put, you know, uh, a really good marketing plan together, but they're already making phone calls to try to but bring the students back. Do you know if some of these people have uh, have actually moved out of Brockton? Some, um, some have moved. Some have again just didn't want to bring, uh, didn't want their children to come to school because of the dangers of COVID. Uh, even though we were remote, um, some uh, several took their um, their children and put them in private schools who were at 100% since September, and they wanted. Um, they wanted their um, their kids in school, so a lot of them, because we were remote, and this has happened with a lot of districts around. I'm in superintendent meetings often, and every district, actually, we, we're down 990 now, but in October, we were down about 450, and a lot of districts like uh, Springfield and Worcester, and they were down about 1,000 kids back in October 1st. And a lot of the smaller districts um, and those superintendents, enrollment's down everywhere. And a lot of it is um, a lot of uh, parents choosing to keep their children home and some, some that wanted their, their kids in school full time, so they sent them to private schools. Right. Hopefully they'll be back. Yeah, we're going to try. All right. And um, Mr. Rodriguez, I know you're on Zoom, so I don't want to skip you. Do you have any questions so far? Not at the moment. All right. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. All right. So um, do you want to bring up just the talking points, and I'll go over. It's Mullen, do you have that one? Tracy, it's this one here. Um, all right, so basically, um, I'll have to read off of this because I can't see up there. <laughs> so um, this uh, first with the special education request and um, uh, for the MSN positions, um, it's, re it's supported by reviewing data from our whistle list, and that's our early warning list, uh, students that are really struggling. Um, and to, so those MSN positions really focus on our kids that are, are struggling behind grade level, um, into support of their IEPs. Um, we also uh, examined in the special ed department with all the hard work they put in was the de delivery plans on IEPs and reviewed current data from for targeted instruction. I think, Laura, Laura are you here with us? Yes, I am. So I don't want to talk for you, but um, I'll let you jump in because you and I and executive team spent a lot of time on this, but you did the, the, the legwork and really studying uh, what schools needed uh, and based on data and the needs of our students. So I'll let you, um, let you discuss. Mike, you're doing a great job, thank you. Um, we did look at, we do, we do a lot of analyzing of the data um, and we're also looking at um, the district review, looking at inclusive practices, 
partial inclusion, uh, a lot more opportunities for students with disabilities. And we reviewed the data and determined that these additional positions will help support not only the students, um, but really support the plan in Brockton moving forward. Um, the vocational request um, we for the tiered monitor review that we have through the Department of Ed is really looking at the Keith Center and the Huntington Alter um, Therapeutic Day School, providing some more vocational opportunities for those students. Um, and we are definitely, um, even during the pandemic, we are getting increased referrals for students who are struggling, and we need to make sure that we're providing all the students um, a lot of uh, as many opportunities as they can to make progress. Um, but we did use a lot of data, the whistle list, and I think that um, really analyzing and working with the principals and then working with the department, my special ed department, we, this was a pr pretty comprehensive list of um, services needed. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Laurie, and, and it's, it's important you. to point out that um, one thing uh, in the review by the Department of Ed was about equal access, especially for our students into different pathways, students at the Huntington and at the Key Center, um, to really have access to uh, more vocational programs, access to higher level classes, um, yes. and we're going to work on that as well. Um, I actually have, we're going to set up a meeting now with this one silver lining in a virtual world. Um, there is a way for um, a students that, are, you know, if they're not at Brockton High School, they're at the Huntington or they're at the uh, Key Center and there's not, a special, there's, no, there's not a specialized teacher there and that teacher may work at Brockton High School. We'll be able to Zoom that teacher in over at the Huntington and the Keith. It's something that obviously I'd need to work on with Kim Gibson, um, but it's, it's opportunities that can grow for our students in the different pathways so they have access to to everything students at Brockton High have access to. So that's again another silver lining from remote learning. There's not many, there's a few though. Uh, <laughs> right, right. They, Mike, can I just add one more thing, I'm sorry. Sure. This is Laurie again. Um, we've done a really nice, a really good job with compliance and we need to continue to do that. And these positions will help make sure that our students with disabilities were in compliance and we're working towards their goals and objectives. Um, so it's really a comprehensive look at the department and then, um, you know, looking at compliance and the civil rights of students, the district review, the Jesse review, um, and I really feel this is a strong representation of what we need for the district. Thanks. Thank you, Lori. And, you know, you make a good point, Superintendent. It, the techno a lot of the technology investments we've been able to make, of course, were COVID related. Once COVID is behind us, hopefully sooner than later, um, you know, we now have the, the technology still that we can, you know, look at different ways to, you know, use it in, the, in ways that we wouldn't have been able to before because we didn't, we didn't have it. So anyway. Yep. All set. So then our uh, bilingual department, uh, the number on this is it's actually 19 positions, um, ESL um, positions. And again, it's obviously supporting our bilingual students. I think Kelly Jones is with us. She I might've. am here. All right. thank so, you, Kelly. so um, thank you, Mike. You know, as we know, we have had a growing number of English learners over the past few years. Um, the majority of our students who are English learners are in integrated programs, which means that they are in uh, regular general education classrooms, um, but they still require to have ESL at their proficiency level. And so um, students who are in the foundational levels, which is levels one and through three, are required to have two blocks of ESL per day, um, as well as students who who are at the transitional levels, levels three through five, are required to have one block of ESL per day. This includes students who are in um, special education classrooms, um, and, and all students are entitled to ESL services appropriate to their proficiency level as they are acquiring grade level content. So um, these positions will really support 
us in that major compliance um, kind of component for our our district and our, our TFM. Thank you, Kelly. Any questions for Kelly? And we obviously know the importance of supporting our English language learners. No, absolutely. We have a lot of English language learners in our district and, and clearly, you know, need to give them better support and, um, you know, give them what they need so that they can go on and be successful in the Brockton Public Schools. So, um, no, thank you, Kelly, for joining us and for the information and for, you know, the work you and, and your team do here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Um, next, we have East Middle School. Uh, and some of their request is partially driven by enrollment. They are anticipating 220 students in their eighth grade class for next year. Um, so they have to move to two clusters. Um, so they need uh, additional math teacher for their sixth grade and their um, additional one for their seventh grade. And a lot of this um, is focused on their sustainability plan. Um, and in their targeted site vi uh, visit, they really wanted um, the school uh, in their meetings with the Department of Education, um, they really want the school to focus on, uh, on math as well, but we also want to make sure we're focusing on literacy. So um, right now they're getting two additional uh, math teachers. Um, and again, these, these, um, these positions were supported by reviewing of their MCAS data, their STAR testing, and also their uh, sustainability report uh, and plan. Uh, in their work with the team. Uh, June, you want to jump in because you do a lot more work around sustainability plans uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, uh, and I know you spend a lot of time working with the schools on these reports and members of your team serve on those sustainability uh, planning teams. So I'll let you jump in about the East sustainability right. plan and yeah. their focus on math. Can you actually, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Hello? We could hear you. Now we can't. <laughs> He's gone again. Hi, can you hear me? There you are. There we go. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was having technical difficulties. I um, switched over from my speakers to my headphones. And so I heard you talking about the um, East and how we're um, working closely with our principals to ensure that the positions that they're seeking are closely tied to their sustainable improvement plans. And so we had an opportunity, um, but the superintendent had each one of our, our principals come in and speak to their sustainable improvement plans and make that direct connection between the requested positions and what they had in their plan and to really be able to talk about how those positions would support the implementation of their plan. And so, as you know, there's quite a few of our 11 of our schools that are um, have submitted sustainable improvement plans. They're all in the implementation phase and these positions are really meant to support the implementation phase of the sustainable improvement plans. Any questions about that for June? So moving on to North. Uh, North is pretty self uh, uh, explain. Uh, ex um, any, it just basically speaks for itself. North uh, needs to do to adding another grade. Um, we're anticipating about 180 um, new sixth graders going into North, which adds obviously a cluster. Um, but we also have to add foreign language there, which they currently do not have. Um, and obviously we need to add um, clusters of te two clusters of teachers. Um, so that's why um, we needed those positions at North for a total of eight, uh, two foreign language, one art, one English teacher, one math teacher, two science teachers, and one social studies teacher. And that obviously will have North ready to welcome their, their new sixth graders next year. And they'll obviously have two grades. It'll be one more year before we have North back to um, their regular six through eight. Okay. So at the PLUF, um, we spent a lot of time talking to Principal Nezrella. Um, she is requesting an additional um, science teacher. I mean, I'm sorry, Chinese teacher. Um, the classes are very large. 
Um, their classes are 30 and 32 in their, in their uh, Chinese classes, so she needs one teacher, because uh, obviously they're expecting more kids next year. Um, so we need to go to three Chinese teachers there uh, to bring the class size down. We also, um, they're requesting another math teacher to support students in the lower 25% who are really struggling with math. Um, they'll provide tier two instruction in the classroom. They'll offer pullouts. Um, they'll also push in uh, to classrooms and work with students, uh, not only the students that are struggling, they'll work with all students when they're in the classrooms, but they'll also do some pullouts to work with students who are really struggling in the lower 25% with their uh, math scores. So obviously the data uh, similar to East is to um, really to try to improve their math scores. And again, we'll also be looking at literacy as well. So. And it's all, um, Pluff is in speaking of literacy, they are looking at, uh, um, we also recommend adding a reading teacher um, to equip our students with better strategies to become better readers. Um, and, and June and I have talked about this and, and back several years ago, Sharon and I did this work at Brockton High School. Um, we, we, on the restructuring committee, and this goes back uh, fifth, almost 20 years, um, we, our students at Brockton High at the time were struggling with math. And so what we, uh, what the restructuring committee did on several Saturdays is really look at the MCAS math exam at the time and we noticed that a lot of our students were not doing well in math because math was almost just as much as a reading test as it was math, uh, as the word problems were very difficult. And a lot of students were struggling with really understanding what the question was asking them. So we really focused on, we found out there was a lot of students knew the actual how to do the math, but they didn't know what the question was asking them. So we spent a lot of time um, on literacy um, on reading skills and helping students really pick out from the word problems what they were asking them to do and what math they were asking them to do. And it was very successful. And now our middle schools are looking to do the same thing. Great. And I, I can tell you, <clears throat> you know, I see on, on, on South you've put in for two math teachers. And, you know, I think, as you know, we've had a, you know, a couple of principals that have come and gone over the years there, but the one consistent request that I've gotten from every one of them is we need two or three more math teachers. That's been consistent right all along. And I think we all know, you know, looking at the MCAS scores that we've had all the, at least the time I've been on the committee, again, this has always been an area that, you know, our students needed additional support. So I'm glad to see we're finally able to do that. Absolutely. I just have a question. Miss Asak. So I noticed um, we have North, South, East, and West, and then Plouffe. I don't see Ashfield on here. so. That's Ashfield has requested other positions that we'll talk about next week that support teachers. Okay. Um, right now, they didn't need any additional teachers. She was in really good shape. Um, she has asked for uh, other um, positions that we're going to discuss next week uh, that would be more of a support for teachers. Um, but um, actual uh, academic teachers, she did not need any. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. Excellent. Anyone else? Okay, go ahead. So uh, South, again, two math teachers, one uh, English language arts teacher, again, tied to their sustainability plan, um, tied to, again, um, looking at their star testing uh, and their results, and um, students, a majority of the students scoring below the benchmarks. So uh, Principal Duart is really looking to um, uh, beef up, again, math instruction um, with extra teachers, and again, would, would be able to do pull out uh, and also an ELA teacher, again, we really want to start to focus across the district on literacy because um, we find that a lot of students are struggling even in math because of literacy. So um, that's uh, South. And then at West, um, Principal Campbell is requesting one math, one science, and one social studies teacher. Um, it gives a lot of flexibility in cutting down class size, and it's also going to provide a lot more common planning time so teachers can work together in the, during the day and have common planning time so they actually can meet, talk about students, talk about and share the, um, what wor what's working for students, share what's not working so they can change strategies. And it's actually um, some of the most important work that teachers do is collaboration with each other. Um, across disciplines to really work together and focus on student needs. So uh, in, the, in the middle schools, um, 
used to do a lot of common planning time, and unfortunately, with budget cuts um, and the lack of a number of staff, we had um, schools that had to stop that. And common planning time, again, is very important for collaboration, for teachers working together to support students. And then Dr. Murray, I believe, is with us. And he can talk about the needs for Brockton High School. You there? with us is he there? Uh, if not, it doesn't I sound like it all right um, so dr. Murray I mean he has a lot of positions to fill um, a total I believe there's um, there's ba between retirements and some unfilled positions that are filled with permanent subs um, he has 15 but those are already budgeted Right. Um, so right now he's looking for an additional seven. He needs a Spanish teacher, two social studies teachers, and the reason why they're for social studies is um, they are, um, whereas we have a new social studies curriculum that they're starting and they really need the extra teachers, again, to lower class size and really focus on uh, the curriculum, um, the new curriculum in social studies. They need one biology teacher, a construction teacher with a wood shop, Again, to grow our, um, our vocational chapter 74 programs, another culinary arts teacher. Um, this is, again, to help with, there's a lot of kids that are interested in restaurant management. Um, it's also in line with our goal to, uh, when the Shaw Center ceases uh, to be a vaccination site, is for us to move culinary arts over to the Shaw Center, which was our plan pre-COVID, uh, but it's still our plan um, once, obviously, we get through this. So to really um, open up more Chapter 70 pro 74 programs for our students. And then, again, I talked about the nursing teacher. Um, we always have 80 to 90 students waiting to get into nursing. Wow. Um, the wait list is always very long, so we want to add another nursing teacher uh, to cut down the wait list. And then um, I'll jump back because I skipped over a couple. I, um, at the Key Center, um, I, I met with Principal Burns and uh, Dr. Kahn is last week. Uh, they're, and again, with, under special education, they're getting another a vocational teacher. But under uh, the Key Center as well, they need a social studies teacher. Um, there's only one currently at, at the Key Center for 100 plus students. Um, and that person also, um, acts also as like a floor teacher so it cuts down on the number of classes i believe he teaches two less classes so an extra social studies teacher would obviously bring down the class size and it's needed because they have uh, uh, more students to serve so that's the need for the key center and next out uh, june you want to jump in about the pre-k the four pre-k positions Yes, hopefully this goes a little smoother. So can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, so, um, and I know that many of you on the school committee remember when we made the decision to switch back to, um, to roll back the kindergarten entrance date. And I remember how important it was to you at the time that we also had a plan to expand the number of pre-K seats we would have in place um, as we went through that process. And so last year, if you remember, through the Student Opportunity Act, we had intended to add four additional pre-K classrooms. And obviously we um, second, though, we had to rethink that because um, we knew that bringing four-year-olds into school for full day um, might not exactly be uh, palpable for our parents and maybe not in the best interest of our kids. And so we're looking forward to being able to move forward with that plan. Um, you'll remember a couple of months ago that we did present that as part of the Student Opportunity Act plan. It was um, embedded within commitment number one. And so we're, we're ready to move forward on four 
to add four additional pre-K, pre full day pre-K classes, two at the Hancock and two at the Downey. And if you remember, we already have two full day pre-K pre classes at the Arnone. So we're excited to move forward on that. And um, I think that we're ready to start advertising those positions and, uh, and get ready to open up uh, additional seats. And so next year we will have 120 full day pre-K seats. And I think it also, um, it puts the um, district in position. Uh, right now we get funded for half, right Aldo, half the chapter 70 money for pre-K students. This is a push by the Department of Education is to grow pre-K. Uh, and that's the reason, uh, one of the reasons we had it in our Student Opportunity Act, not because it's a push by the Department of Ed, it's what's right for kids um, in pre-K, um, getting them into school early. Um, so it is a goal of not only the Department of Ed, but a goal of ours. And, it, we, and you put that in when you changed the, the start date for our kindergarten students, and, and rightfully so. so um, we're hoping it, it gets us, we have these, the, adding these classes that next year or the year after the state will start to fund these students at the full chapter 70 money um, because it is a push by the Department of Ed and I'm sure, um, you know, they'll push the governor's office to start to put more funding in to expand pre-K pr um, programs. Great. So if I could just add over the next couple of years as Tended to saying we intend to add more seats to the point where those three to four hundred uh, so-called burr babies or four-year-olds will all have access to a full-day pre-K seat. So we're hoping to have that in place by the end of, um, I would say, the next within the next three years. Great. Um, I have a question. <clears throat> either the superintendent or, or, or June, when we were talking about the high school, yes. you mentioned that we needed the social studies teachers and it was tied to new the, curriculum. the new curriculum. Which opens up more elective classes. Um, as you know, you have the requirement social studies classes that they, uh, students need to take, but also uh, students, when, especially when they get to be juniors and seniors, they take elective uh, social studies classes, history classes, obviously, and um, it just opens up more opportunity. It also lowers class size. I mean, even when I was at the high school, and I left the high school in 2010, um, those elective classes in, in for our juniors and seniors, they were pushing 35 to 38, some 40. Um, uh, in the cl classes the students really like. And also with social studies, it also helps us ex expand, um, you know, the options that we need to add to our history department about um, teaching students, we're changing our curriculum around, um, you know, a more diverse, teaching a more diverse curriculum, focus on, you know, again, not just one month of Black History Month, it's about um, the history of America um, and incorporating um, people of color, their obviously uh, contributions in which they are you know, several comp, uh, contributions, and we need to really start focusing on that. Just, not just one black history course, uh, African-American history, and Sharon taught that when she was there. Greg Hazelwood, only one teacher, teaches it now. It's about expanding those opportunities for kids and really opening up our curriculum to make sure it represents everybody in, in the area of history. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Uh, Mr. Sullivan? Yep. Mike, I'm... I'm not sure if I heard uh, June Saber right. She said the pre-K will be for the next three years to start? Pre-K will be, um, we're adding four for next year. We still have, um, we have pre-K classes now. We're adding four full day pre-K. I didn't, I didn't hear you. I thought she said it wasn't going to start for another three years. No, I think it's a three-year plan to expand it. So every school has pre-K? June, I, I let you, um, I didn't. Right, no, th that is our, our plan, our long range plan is to have pre-K classes offered in all of our elementary schools. But obviously it's going to take a few years to be able to put that into place. So right now what we do is put our, our pre-K classes that we're growing, we're putting in obviously schools that have the space. 
there are schools that just don't have the um, right. the classrooms available to add pre-K. So the Downey and the Hancock do. Um, so that's why obviously you're seeing the classes go there. Um, we'd rather have them in every building. Again, it's all about space. Um, it also help us, helps us with transportation. So um, that's our plan over three years to have pre-K in every elementary school. Excellent. Mike, just one, so if the teachers are gonna be hired now, do you actually need them for three years down the road? Or no, the, the four we're adding now, the four pre-K classrooms. For the kids in place now? To have kids for this September coming oh, okay. up, so before. What June's saying is in the three-year goal of ours is to have pre-K at every, every school. And then you would add teachers each year for that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Oh, so the social, I just had a question on the social studies. Um, so it's a new, how many years of social studies do they have to take in high school? Um, they have to take at least two. And then there's electives um, for, and then there's semester classes they have to take. I want to say, I wish I had my social studies people with me, but I want to say they take up to 12 credits. Uh, some of them are full-year courses. Some of them are half-year courses. Uh, but pretty much throughout, I think it's senior year, they might have an option. If they don't need a history um, class, they might not have to take one. But pretty much all four years, all our students take a history course. Okay, so they're taking something every every year. Pretty much every year, yeah. Okay, it's, but it's either. But it a, might be half a it's year. Either a full year course or it's a semester course. Um, um, it depends on again. It but they can on. pick electives. They, they can pick the electives, correct? Okay. And the problem is a lot of our students, um, a lot of our juniors and seniors, aren't able to get the electives they want because we just don't have. Again, we and we pack those classes, and they have been packed for years. Um, and again, sometimes it's up to 40, and it's, um, it's classes that um, teachers, you know, I mean, that um, teachers do a great job teaching, and also students like, and a lot of them miss out on them because we just don't have enough space. I think Sharon's with us. Sharon there? I'm here. Sharon, do you, Sharon's a former <laughs> department head of um, history at Brockton High. So Sharon, do you wanna just go over that quickly? I probably missed a couple things. I'm sorry, what am I going over? Just um, the um, requirements for um, a student for in the area of social studies at Brockton High School. So the requirements have changed significantly since I was department and I must admit. Uh, but I know that um, no matter what, it's by law that students have to take U.S. history. Uh, and they're currently in the process of redesigning the curriculum um, with the U.S. and their focus on the world, uh, they're looking at a more thematic approach to to world history and giving students opportunities to do research. Uh, but they're in the process of developing that curriculum right now. I it would be for you to have probably uh, Stephanie and maybe a couple of the members of the steering committee come in and present the work that they're doing. Um, I spoke with one of the teachers last week and they're really excited about uh, the history standards. When they change, it means you have to continuously update what you have. And so they're in the process of doing that now um, and it, uh, taking a very different approach to the way U.S. history is taught, as the superintendent was saying, a more inclusive um, approach to teaching U.S. history as well as world history. Uh, but I think if you could see some of the units they've developed and some of the curriculum that they've worked on, it would be really you. Um, the legal requirement for U.S. history did not change. Yeah, so it's, uh, thanks, Sharon. It's, it's 18 credits total that uh, a senior has to graduate with, 18 credits in social studies. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Cox, for um, sending me that. Superintendent, if I can just add to that, um, just thinking about the, the steering committee that um, Stephanie Landerholm has led at the high school. They have done a lot of great work. I've met with her a few times to talk about that work. The other thing that's been really powerful is she and Jamie Esty, our social studies content lead at the middle school level, have collaborated in a way that is really allowing us to establish that vertical articulation around student learning goals from middle school throughout high school. 
and something that's been a big deal in the new, with the new standards is around the civics project. And that has been something that the two of them, meaning Jamie Esty and Stephanie Landerholm, have uh, really collaborated closely on. And if you are interested in hearing more about them, I'm sure that they would be happy to come to a curriculum subcommittee meeting. Yeah, we'll set a curriculum subcommittee to have them. Yeah, I think it would okay. benefit the committee to Absolutely. hear what the students are being taught now as compared to what they were taught before and what we were missing absolutely on social studies because there's a lot of talk about that in the news and yep. the whole so i think it would benefit everybody if we good point yep. Yep. i'll work with we'll melinda get to, to get that set up yep. <clears throat> so i know thank um, you aldo just can you ex um explain again the number you use the sixty thousand? the sixty thousand i used again was an average that you know, for our district, I took the starting salary first year. Um, some of the bachelor's degree was forty-six thousand, roughly, and the average is around um, low low eighties um, for our district. And that's primarily because over the past five, six, seven years, the layoffs have caused us to lose all of our lower-ended paid teachers, and all we have is the ones who've been here, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty years or more, or at the higher end of the salary. I envision most of the staff coming in now will be, um, you know, new college graduates, people who have maybe one or two years experience in, in the teaching business, and I incorporated in there some health insurance costs. Some take it, some don't. You know, most um, most kids are on their uh, parents' health insurance till the 26, so some don't take it right out the bat. So I, I incorporated a low number in there, so that's why I come up with an average of about 60,000. So again, we might have some that come in at um, 70 and some that come in at 48. So that's the average amount all right mrs mendez so if they don't take the health insurance they get more on their no. salary oh this is just no this is just for budgeting purposes okay all right any other questions did you have anything that's it for me thank that's you it. okay does any member of the committee have any other questions tony i was trying not to skip the people on zoom just because they're i can't see them waving their hand okay all right <clears throat> um is there any other business agenda item number two for finance this evening all right seeing none i'll entertain a motion to adjourn motion, motion. To sorry tony's got it what's that I think Tony was motioning. I'll second. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Rodriguez, seconded by Ms. Azak. I will call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino is a yes. Azak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. M Mr. Minicello. He's with us. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Finance is adjourned. Thank you.